Well, hello again, and welcome to the Centerpoint Business Clinic. It is hosted by Centerpoint Public Library, and we are going to be talking about time management today. Uh, the name of our workshop is, Where Did the Time Go? And I have to give a shout out to Kara Willem, who is the manager of adult services here at Centerpoint Public Library for that fun title, Where Did the Time Go? My name is Octavia Karansky, and I'm actually the administrator for a Facebook business page called 35215. On 35215, we make um, free listings possible for local business. We support local business. You can post your products and services there. We post announcements about upcoming conferences, jobs, and yes, trainings like this one. So if you have a second, go to 35215 and take a look. We are here at the business clinic uh, once a month, each month, and we discuss challenges that are common for most small businesses. Last month, for example, we discussed competition, and I gave some suggestions for how you might help your competitors help you make your business bigger and better. You might want to check that out. I think it's still on the Centerpoint Public Library's Facebook page and YouTube channel, okay? This month we'll be talking about time management as I, as I have already said, and this um, discussion will center on time during a business day. Although some of the principles that I'm going to offer to you can be used very successfully for your, for your personal use in, in your personal life. So speaking of time, let's go ahead and get started. I have prepared a little uh, visual for you to help us through this discussion. You know, some of the benefits of better time management I've just mentioned to you are reduced stress. And who can't use a little less stress? It is also um, more, you're also more likely to complete goals if your time is managed correctly. And that is very satisfying in both personal and business. Now, I have an exercise I've developed for you. I should show that for you, to you first. I have an exercise I've developed for you, and it'll just take a few minutes of your time. I'm going to give you permission to wait until Monday to do this because it is about a business day. And here's how the exercise goes. You're gonna take just a single sheet of paper. Can you see that, Kara? See that a single sheet of paper and fold it into three parts like this, like this, thusly, and you will have three columns. And I'm going to give you what you're going to write at the top of each of these three columns. Um, and I promise you that by the end of that day, you will know better where your time is going. And we're going to talk about why. So you will know what you plan to do, what you actually did, and what happened. Because often column A, what you plan to do, doesn't match up with column B, what actually happened. So we're going to talk about those three columns. And as I said, I prepared a little visual for you to help us through this conversation. I interviewed a small business owner, and I'm not going to reveal who it was, but she has given me permission to use her day as an example. So in column A, which is going to be called how I plan to spend my time today, you will take five minutes in the morning and just jot down four or five things that you intend to accomplish that day. That's what you're gonna do in column A. Now here are the things that she selected for that day. These were her goals for the day. She chose finance and she said she was gonna spend an hour and a half on finance. Oh, and I should have said that. You not only want to list the things you want to accomplish, but how much time you plan to spend on accomplishing that goal. So this particular business owner said that at the top of her list was finance. That's one and a half hours that she was going to spend that day. Now finance can include any number of things. It could be meeting with your bookkeeper and going over your balance sheet or your profit and loss sheet or it could be looking online for bidding opportunities. The point of dedicating some time to finance is to examine your cash flow. How much is going in and how much is going out? This should always be at the front of your mind. So finance could be any number of things uh, about cash flow, depending upon where you are in your business, whether you're in startup or whether you are well established, you know, over five years, you still wanna know where your money is. She was going to spend one and a half hours on finance. 
The next item on her business agenda for that day was to coach her employees. She was going to spend two hours that day coaching her employees. Now, I totally approve of this use of time for small business owners. You want to make sure that your employees not only understand what their job is, but what their purpose in their job is and what the purpose of the company is. This is very important for employee buy-in. You want your employees to feel comfortable about making judgments, making decisions, and doing their best possible job. And in order to do that, they need proper training. And this requires consistent interaction with your employees. Your employees can deliver very important information to you about your customers because after all, they spend more time with your customers than you do. And so you want to ask them questions about that. What kind of comments come up? What kind of problems come up? What did you do about it? This is employee um, coaching. Uh, it's often misunderstood, and I'll talk a little bit about that a little bit more about that later. But she planned to spend two hours coaching her employees. She happens to have two employees. I thought that was quite a bit of time, um, but if these are new employees, then perhaps two hours uh, on that particular day was appropriate. The next uh, item on her business agenda for that day was marketing. And I put the Facebook logo there because for small business, social media marketing is how they market. It's a very inexpensive and effective way to do marketing for, for small business. Now in marketing, you might want to go online and, make, and check for other platforms, for example, that you may need to be posting on. You want to be making sure that your message is clear and communicating the value of your company, of the product and the service. You want to make sure that the contact information is readily available and you want to make sure that it's working. We always want to track results from our marketing. So she was going to do, spend two hours on her marketing. I absolutely approve of marketing being on the list and two hours uh, spent on it is two hours well spent in my opinion. So far, this um, small business person is doing just fine according to me. The next item on her agenda was personal development. This item is very often overlooked by small business owners. Personal development depends very much, is very individualized. It depends upon the small business owner. For some small business owners, personal development could occur when they're working with their bookkeeper. Maybe the small business owner does not know how to read financial statements, and so sitting with the bookkeeper could count as personal development. For some business owners, it may be uh, a more personal, uh, personal development. For example, if you have trouble saying no, you might want to look for some webinars, seminars on um, management or read a book on management because saying no is very important in business. It's just as important as saying yes. So you know your strengths. You wanna to continue to develop those strengths. You also know where you need support and you want to find ways to uh, find that support for yourself so that you can be all that you need to be uh, for the sake of your business. And the fifth thing that this small business owner had listed for today was networking. She was going to devote one and a half hours to networking. On a scale of one to 10, I believe networking is a 12. And here's why I say that. You need to be able to, as a small business owner, in order to grow, get to the decision makers. There is a point in the life of a business in which it is no longer so much about what you know. Your product is as good as anyone's. Your service is as good as anyone's. The next thing is who you know. I call it day X. This is when it changed from what you know to who you know. Very very difficult to navigate, to move to that next level. And it's going to take some strategizing and some deliberate actions on your part to get to that next level. That is a very windy, narrow, yellow brick road. Um, a suggestion, if I may, 
you might consider joining a couple of chambers for this. The Centerpoint Area Chamber of Commerce, for example, has a luncheon once a month. They invite a featured speaker. You could learn, you could do some personal development there. And uh, the attendance, as I understand it, is quite good, 20, 25 people, and they are, uh, most, for the most part, CEOs of their company. This is a perfect opportunity to learn and to also do that networking. You have to get to the yes person, the person who can sign the contract and write that check. And networking is how that's done. So if you're not doing any networking, you are, dooming your business to a plateau situation and where you are making all the money, no matter how good you are at what you do, you are making all the money that you're going to make. You have to have some kind of plan around networking. So these were her five goals. By the way, this comes to an eight hour day and you will notice that none of these are actually working in the business. She's not cutting hair. That's not listed here. She's not mowing lawns. It's not listed here. She's not hanging clothes, not listed here. This is all about building infrastructure for the business. And as the owner, this is actually your major job. You hire employees to actually do the work. Eight hours, I think eight hours well spent. Let's go to column B and see what actually happens. So at the end of your day, you're gonna spend um, five or 10 minutes and write down what you actually did and how much time you actually spent on these activities. This is her column B, which we're calling how I actually spent my time. This is where the time went. On finance, we had, we had um, decided to spend an hour and a half on finance. She actually only spent a half an hour. Now, there may be an explanation for this, Perhaps her goal was to find new bid opportunities. She went online and found them immediately. And she decided to spend the other hour preparing proposals. Maybe a deadline was coming up. Okay, that's okay. I would give her a star for that. But we would need to know what happened to that other hour. Because remember, the point of this is how you spend your time and what happens, which we'll get to in column C. Her next um, um, agenda item was coaching employees. She had said she was going to spend two hours. We see she spent three hours. I would, if I were coaching this small business owner, I would definitely ask her about that extra hour. Why did you need an additional hour to coach your employees? Now I had promised I would talk to you a little more about what coaching employees involves. I'm gonna approach it another way and tell you what coaching employees does not involve. This is not an opportunity to talk about their marital problems or why their grandchildren are not reading at the level that they should be reading. It is not that kind of coaching. It's coaching about business. If, for example, they're having trouble making, getting to work on time, is there something that you need to know about that? If they're having trouble navigating some of the equipment, do they need additional training about that? Because remember, your employees can actually contribute to the bottom line of your company. If you're a service organization and one of your employees is out, finishes a service call, they should have a stack of business cards and they should feel comfortable in saying to the customer, if you're happy with our work, and it happens to come up in conversation, we would really appreciate it if you would make that referral. They can actually contribute to your bottom line if they're well-trained. That's the kind of coaching that I'm talking about. How to handle a customer complaint. How to, what to do if a customer comes in and they are unhappy with how things are going. That's the kind of coaching we're talking about. What you want from your employee is to move them from employee to stakeholder. You want them to feel necessary to the company, important to the company, and the way to do that is to stay in touch with your employees and provide them with the information that they need in order to do their best possible job. What is the long-term benefit for the company? Long-term employees. Also, the company does better. Possible bonus, possible raise, possible new job opportunities, possible higher job opportunities. This is what um, you want to present to your employees, and that's the kind of coaching that needs to happen there. So um, 
I don't know why she spent an additional hour with her employees. Perhaps there was a problem and she had to go out and take care of it. I don't know, we didn't go into that kind of detail. But again, this is about keeping track of how you're spending your time. You ought to know why you had to spend that extra hour with the employee. Okay, now her third item was marketing. She was gonna spend two hours on marketing and she did. And I'm going to give her a star for that. I'm going to assume she wasn't actually shopping, but she was, in fact, looking for additional marketing opportunities. Marketing, by the way, is one of those things that can be farmed out successfully. You can hire a marketing firm and have them take over the marketing, and then you could use those two hours for networking, let's say, you know, getting additional um customers in or meeting people who can say yes. You could use those two hours for um, other um, activities that contribute to company growth. But I'm going to give her a pass. She did spend two hours on marketing. She said it was marketing, so we'll go on to the next category, which was personal development. Now, this business owner said that she was going to spend an hour on personal development. She spent a half an hour. If I were coaching this um, particular business owner, I would ask her what happened to that half hour. Perhaps she went online and she found a webinar, a seminar that was exactly on point for what she needed it to be. Or she searched the Center Point Public Library's uh, catalog and she found exactly the book that would, she needed to read to put her on point around personal development. And she only needed a half an hour. Um, so uh, I, I would then ask her, well, what did you do with the other half hour? I mean, could you have read a magazine article online while you're waiting for the book to come in? Again, this is about accountability, about how time is used. Time really is money in, in business. Lastly, we were gonna spend an hour and a half on networking, all important networking. We gotta get to the yes people to get to the next level. We said we were gonna spend an hour and a half on networking. Unfortunately, there's a zero there. And she only spent, a, she spent no time on networking. I would definitely ask her what happens there because this is how you attain company growth and all the benefits that come with company growth. Uh, more employees, better benefits because we have higher revenues. This is absolutely critical. So I would definitely ask her what happened there. And speaking of asking what happened, uh, let's go to column C and we'll talk about some of the obstacles that keep column A and column B from matching up. I've listed three, there's about 199, but I've listed three and here they are. These are the most common and after talking to this particular business owner, this happens to be her three. See if any of these resonate with you. First, her time management skills do need some, some work. Time management is a skill. That means that it can be learned. It's not an inherent thing. You know, you don't have to be naturally born. Nobody's naturally born with it. Well, maybe somebody, I don't know who they are, but for the most part, it's a skill that has to be practiced. And so that's good news, because if it was something you had to be born with, then you know, a lot of us would be out of luck. You can learn to manage your time better. And there are at least a million and a half books on, on that. Choose one that resonates with you, that you can actually follow, and then do the best you can. But your time does have to be managed. The second um, most common obstacle I find for small business owners, and this one in particular, was boundaries. She has what she refers to as an open door policy when it comes to her employees, meaning anyone can come in at any time and talk to her about anything. And it sounds wonderful, and probably um, her employees appreciate that, but it's not the best practice for business, which is the best um, scenario for her employees and the company. We do have to set boundaries, um, not just with our employees, but with other interruptions. Um, salespeople who come in the door, telephone calls, email messages, texting, um, sudden emergencies of any kind. There shouldn't be too many emergencies in business. 
Um, emergencies eat up time. It should be normal, 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 emergency, normal, 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 emergency. Not emergency, 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 normal, emergency, normal. That, that's not the way it should be. You should be able to um, train your employees so that there are not so many emergencies and empower them to make judgment calls and decision makings so that they don't have to come to you with every single solitary, I need to buy some thumbtacks kind of question. And the third thing I wanted to mention in particular is delegation, which seems to be really painful for small business owners. Once your employees are trained, um, let them do their job. I see too many small business owners training their employees, but then they go over and do a part of their job. You know, maybe it's something they enjoy doing. And so they'll go out and they'll cut hair or they'll hang clothes or they'll do whatever it is that's involved in the business because they enjoy doing it. And I'm not saying never do that, but for the most part, the employees are there to do that job let them have the satisfaction of doing that job and getting good at doing that job. And you take care of the other stuff that the employees cannot take care of. Okay. Well, that's not all, but that's all we have time for today. I hope that that was helpful. Uh, that is always my goal. I want to thank Center Point Public Library for permitting Center Point Business Clinic and for this time with you. Uh, in summary, I just want to say this. You are the greatest asset to your company. You are also its biggest challenge. You are the biggest threat to the success of your company. It is your decision. I hope that you make the right decision because we need you. We need you to do well and we want you to do well. Next month, we're going to be talking about finance and just finance. Um, how do lending in this institution see your business? Why is it so difficult to get money, to find money? What to do in bidding opportunities? We're going to be talking about money next, next month. Okay. Um, you can reach me, by the way, if you would like to get copies of these sheets, if you think it would be helpful. You can reach me by inboxing me at 35215 or you can email me at email.35215 at gmail.com. That's info.35215 at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. Any comments, suggestions, concerns, criticism, I'm open to all of it. I, I want to hear from you. That's, that's why we're here, to help you. In the meantime, try this on Monday. I hope you have the best week ever, and I'll see you next month.